In this video, we are going to explore voxel paint in 3D Coat. It introduces true volumetric texture painting, which is not only a new paradigm within the application itself, but to the entire industry as well. Allow me to refer to this simple sketch in order to help illustrate why this is such a unique painting platform. The cubes represent voxels and thus the user has true volumetric depth. Whereas the single sided surface, you only have the illusion of depth even when many paint layers are utilized. Voxel paint allows an artist inside of a 3D environment to work in a way that is much closer to the real world because real world elements always have some degree of thickness or volume to them. Now let's talk about where we can access these voxel paint tools. Here in the sculpt workspace, you can use it with the sculpting brushes to sculpt and paint simultaneously. To do so, we want to check voxel paint in the tool options panel first. The depth of a sculpting brush also dictates how much paint depth a user will have. You will see the color swatch here in the toolbar and you can change that at any given point. If you plan to use the paint tools in the scope workspace, it might be a good idea to have the color palette docked somewhere or assigned to a hotkey so that you can quickly access it at any given point. This is because when you select a brush from the paint section of the tool panel, you'll not see that swatch, at least not as of this recording. Instead, you'll need to use the color palette to pick your color. At this point, I'm going to switch the scope workspace layout to a custom one. And in this layout, I already have the color palette docked within the inside column. I think I will go ahead and try to pick a muddy brown color. You can also use the image picker to pick your color from an image and also use it as an image reference at the same time. I can zoom in, maybe pick some of the mud here. Let's try it on the model. It works with layers, just like it would in the paint workspace. I'll now proceed to paint in the shoulder area. The tool options panel in this custom layout, I have docked to the right hand side, but typically it would be located here in the upper left hand corner, at least as of this recording. If you have volumetric slice painting checked, it's a bit like using the Vox slice tool, which we will look at in a moment, but you have the ability to paint on the area where you currently have the object sliced. As you paint, you have the ability to adjust the voxel paint depth. Right now it's a bit high at 10, but for demonstration purposes, I think it will be fine. The optimal level is normally around two to three. In order to visually inspect the paint depth after we've done some painting, we could use a few different tools. One of those is vox hide. It's a tool that allows an artist to non-destructively hide or later unhide a portion of their voxel object. It's an extremely useful tool for modeling and sculpting. In fact, the sculpting brushes have a vox hide component, as you will see momentarily. But for this video, we want to focus on using it as a means to reveal the depth of our paint. In the E panel, I have just a simple freeform lasso chosen to make a selection. And I can hide a portion to reveal the depth. If I felt that the paint depth was not sufficient, I can always go back by hitting Control Z a few times to undo. Then I can increase the paint depth value and reapply the paint in the same area. However, at this point, I want to turn to the paint layers where I have already done a bit of work in the foot region so that I can illustrate how a user can utilize sculpting brushes using the Vox Hide feature in order to scrape away some of the volume and voxel paint at the same time. I'm going to uncheck voxel paint because I don't necessarily need it at this point in time. Next, I will check 
act as Vox Hide in the Tool Options panel so that I can use this brush as a mechanism to apply Vox Hide. So it's scraping away the volume and the paint, just as if I were doing so in a real world environment. What's really neat about this Vox Hide implementation within the sculpting brushes is that a user can restore volume at any point by simply holding down the control key while brushing. Let's now take a look at Vox Slice. It's another tool that will allow an artist to visually inspect the volume, but in this case we want to use it in order to assess just how much paint depth has been applied. You can see around the horn that it's fairly deep in this area. When we adjust our view to where we are on the opposite side of the slice plane, you will notice how 3D Coat will automatically switch the transparency to the side that's closest to the camera. Let's go down to the feet. We can see a little bit here where I did a little bit of painting in the shoulder area. I'll just step out of that tool. Now I can hide the paint layer or just delete it by hitting the delete key. Another key feature of voxel paint is the ability now to use conditions painting. This was previously only available inside the paint workspace and what it does is allow the user to dictate where they want the paint to be applied and where they do not want it to be applied. For example, you may want more in concave or convex. There are some options for more in shadow, more on top and bottom and so on. Therefore, a user will need ahead of time to bake a cavity map and or an ambient occlusion map, depending on the desired condition. In order to do this, we want to first go to the Edit menu and then choose either Calculate Occlusion or Curvature. Once a cavity map is baked, 3D Coat will automatically hide it, but a user can always inspect it by enabling the visibility of a layer. Ambient Occlusion, you can hide or unhide that if you like. All right, so with the Voxel Paint Test, I'm just going to select a preset that I've created beforehand. In the color swatch here, I can see the currently selected color. If I want to change it, I can pick from the image. And of course, you can use the hue, saturation, and lightness parameters in order to adjust it further. So as I brush, I may want to check the different channels that are available, the color and the glossiness. In this case, I don't want to add glossiness, so I'll just brush. And this is kind of a jitter brush. If I want to create some mud in certain areas, I may want to apply a little bit more. So let's lighten it up some. And now I'm going to choose more on convex. And this can help me achieve the look of having the mud caked up in layers. All right, this will be a good point to stop the video and we will pick up in the next one continuing our look at voxel paint, but we will look at it using smart materials, the vox slice painting, and also using it with primitives. So stay tuned and we will see you then.